Competition is fierce in the U.S. housing market this spring with surging demand and record low inventory. According to the real estate brokerage Redfin, the number of homes on the market is down almost 50 percent year over year and 36 percent of homes in the U.S. recently sold above their listed price. So Jill Schlesinger is with us now to discuss the latest in the housing market and the industry. Jill, thank you very much for joining us. So it's a seller's market. Uh, you have a home, you've been on the fence about whether or not you should sell. You think maybe you'll make take the plunge because it seems like it's good. Um, would now be a good time to sell? Absolutely. As you noted, the inventory levels are so low that we are seeing houses sell as quickly as in 20 days on average. So that's nuts. So what the thought process has been among realtors is that last year we didn't see a lot of people list their homes, especially those baby boomers who normally might be downsizing or moving to different areas because they were worried about the virus. Of course, you didn't want people traipsing through your home. But now we see that inventory levels plunging because of all the activity as a lot of actually would be millennials and, uh, and, and younger Gen Xers get into the market, gobble up what's on the, on the market. And really, the, le the levels have pushed prices up all over the place, except for those cities that we're seeing previous booms, like the New York metropolitan area, the Bay Area. Some of those inner cities areas actually have seen a little bit of a dip in their prices, although that's starting to climb back as well. That is interesting. Um, if, speaking of interesting, are interest rates also part of the reason that we're seeing this, either that they're particularly low and also a fear that at any point they could go up because they've been low for a really long time? Well, I think that interest rates have played a role in this. But again, this was about almost a panic that took over last year hmm. because people realized, wait a second, I can work from home, right? And, and many people, I should say, about 20 percent of workers are working hmm. from home or I need more space. My kids are learning at home and they look to expand. Now, at the very same time, because we were in the middle of a crisis, the Federal Reserve had pushed interest rates down. Interest rates overall were plunging because economic activity had frozen up. So you're absolutely right. Low mortgage rates, a piece of the puzzle, not the only puzzle, and, and not the only part of the puzzle. And what's kind of interesting now is that I'm hearing from people on my podcast and they're like, you know what? I don't know if I want to get into a house because mortgage rates are all the way back to three and a quarter percent. That's still really <laughs> low, gang. So if you can afford yeah. it, if you can run those numbers and make it work at three and a quarter or three and a half percent, these are still very low levels. So where is the housing market going next? And, you know, how can buyers prepare? Because, you know, other than having sort of a stack of money and being ready for a bidding war, I don't know what you do. I want to find that stack of money. So that's a good, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, okay. You're a buyer. You're ready to get in. So you've got to do your research. You know that. But you also have to run your numbers. And when I talk about running the numbers, I don't mean just how much is the cost of the mortgage. It's the principal and the interest. It's the homeowner's insurance. It's the property taxes. It's also the maintenance of a house. Even if you're buying a new house, I know we sort of think of like the this old house, but this new house can have problems. One to three percent of the purchase price every year you're going to spend on maintaining that house. So you've got that. You've got those numbers in hand. And then you've got to be patient. You may want to expand the geography, because I think that if many people now have the ability to work from home, maybe uh, two days a week or three days a week, this would lighten the load of a commute that might make you say, I don't want to live 60 or 70 miles away. Do look into all of these interesting areas where a lot of municipalities are offering money to move. City of Baltimore is saying, hey, Come move over here. Don't go to D.C. We'll give you five grand towards the purchase of your house. So there are a lot of options out there. I think in, including your stack of money, which we hope you find soon, bring that piece full of patience. <laughs> Me and you both. Uh, Jill, thank you so much.